Now I love movies and I love editing my pictures in Lightroom, but imagine if there was a way that we could grab the colour from a movie and add it to our own pictures. Well there is and it is incredibly easy, that's what I want to show you in this video. Okay, so in previous videos on this channel, I've shown how to capture the colour from a movie by also using Adobe's video editing software, Premiere Pro CC, and using it to create a lookup table, and then showing how to import that lookup table into Photoshop or Lightroom, and then use it. Now, if you've not seen that video, I've had a link to that video in the description part of this video. The technique works great, but there are a few steps involved. You do have to have Adobe's Premiere Pro CC, but maybe most importantly with lookup tables, you can't dive into all the settings that went into making them to adjust them to taste. But there is a totally different way of doing it in Lightroom that makes it super easy and totally editable using the color grading panel. Okay, so this is the picture I want to color grade like a movie. So first of all, we need a movie. One that is maybe relevant to the picture. In this example, seen as mine is a photograph of a boxer, I'll choose something like Rocky or Creed. So the next thing to do is to go to YouTube and type in the name of the movie. I'll put in something like Creed Trailer. Then I'll play one of the videos and find a part of the movie trailer that I want to grab the colour from, pause it, and then take a screen grab. Once we have the screen grab, I'll import it into Lightroom, and then open it in the Develop module. Next we go to the Colour Grading panel. We'll use the Expanded view by clicking on either the Shadows, Midtones and Highlights discs at the top. First of all, I'll go to the Shadows. Now as well as all the controls, there's this little square here that when we click on, opens up like this. There's a number of coloured squares, these are called swatches, and we can use these to sample and store any colours from a picture we have open in Lightroom by simply clicking on the colour sampler and dragging over an area of the photograph. You can see as I do this, the colour underneath the colour sampler is shown here. If I want to store it, I just put my cursor over any of the coloured swatches, right click and choose Set This Swatch to Current Colour. You can see now that the colour I placed the colour sampler over is now saved here. So let me just reset the swatches by right clicking and choosing Reset All Swatches, and I'll reset the image back to its original state. So to capture the colouring from the movie, I can do this. First of all, I'll go to the shadows. I'll then click and drag the colour sampler over an area of shadows in the picture. Now to make it easy to remember which colours are for the shadows, midtones and highlights, I'll go from far left across to the right. So I'll hover my cursor over the far left swatch, right click and choose set this swatch to current colour. Once I've done that I'll hold down the option key on Mac or alt key on Windows and then click on reset to see the picture back in its original state. Then I'll go to the midtones. I'll open up the swatch, choose the colour sampler, and then drag over an area of the image for the midtones. If it's a portrait, then that will generally be the skin tones. Once I have that, I'll then go to the next swatch along, right click and choose Set Swatch to Current Colour. Again, I'll reset the image by holding down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows and clicking on Reset so that I see the picture back in its original state. And finally, the highlights. I'll click to open the expanded view, then click and drag the colour sampler over an area of highlights in the image, then right click on the third swatch along and choose set this swatch to current colour. So now that I've captured the shadows, midtones, and highlight colours from the movie, it is super easy to add them to my own picture. All I need to do is go to the colour grading and then the expanded view. In the shadow areas, we come down to open up the colour swatches and remembering that we started from far left, 
the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. All I need to do is click on the far left one to add the shadow color. Now, when it does that, it might look a little bit too intense, but this is where we can dive in and finesse that look. So with something like this, I want to retain the color, but bring down the saturation. So I'll hold down the shift key to lock the color, and I can drag this marker along just to reduce the saturation of that blue. I can also then come in to the luminance slider, darken down the dark areas in the image so that no color is added into the really dark parts. So maybe around about, say, there. Next thing I'll do is go to the midtones. Again, open up the color swatch, choose the next swatch along, which we chose for the midtones, click down to apply it, and then I can come in, hold down the shift key, and just change the saturation of the midtones. So we'll go for something like that. And then finally, we'll go to the highlights, click to open up the color swatch, choose the third swatch along for the highlights, something like that. I'll then go to the luminance slider to brighten them up so that the brightest parts of the image don't retain any color, something around about there. And then I can play with the blending and the balance. I'll take the blending over to the right just a little bit to bleed all these shadows, midtones, and highlight colors into each other. And then I can decide if I want the colors and the shadows to be more dominant by dragging the balance slider to the left, or the colors and the midtones and highlights to be more dominant by dragging it over to the right. And I think I'll go for something around about, say, there. And I could, if I wanted to, now just add one final bit of color grading by going to the global color wheel and just warming it up just a little bit, something like that, and playing around with the luminance on there as well. So this is before and after, before and after. So there you go, really easy to do and really effective when you do the color grading as that final finishing touch. But best of all is that all of the settings remain completely editable, even if you save it as a preset like I showed in the previous video, which gives you so much more control. But that's all I've got for this video. So as always, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and click on subscribe if you haven't already done so. It's completely free and it's kind of like your way of saying, thanks, Glyn but I'll see you in the next video.